Steph Curry, the Golden State Warriors are mostly really Steph Curry, even up the NBA Finals 2-2 with a huge road win in Boston behind just an absolutely nuclear, vintage, historic, whatever word you want to use, performance from Stephen Curry. With the crowd going crazy, the Boston fans were lined up outside the garden hours before, already chanting, already yelling, already taunting, already probably pre-gaming. It was clear that it was going to be a pretty, uh, pretty intense night. And right from the outset, it felt like Steph um, kind of like felt that. <laughs> and was was ready to match that energy. Um, a lot's been made over the last couple days about, you know, Draymond Green and Clay Thompson, their comments on the fans in Boston, and and all of their performance aspects have been overanalyzed. But it kind of felt like like the the greatness that Steph Curry is performing in these finals has been overlooked. I mean, down two to one, just the one uh, game two victory. Just looking, you know, like he was going to have to do it himself. It, it was kind of going under under noticed based on all the other storylines that had been coming out. But tonight, Steph decided to go and have an absolutely historic performance. He goes for 43 points on 14 of 26 shooting, 10 rebounds, 7 threes in the game. He is the first player in the history of the NBA Finals to put up those numbers. He's the third oldest player to score 40 in a finals game. The other two were Michael Jordan and LeBron James, so not terrible company. We'll get to LeBron in a second here. And also, when it comes to games with seven threes and 30-plus points, I mean, obviously there's stats for everything, but 30-plus points, seven threes, Steph has done it seven times in the NBA Finals. There was only one other player who has done it, and it's Klay Thompson. So, rarefied air again for those two, and honestly, the Warriors needed every bit of this Steph Curry performance. He put them on his back. He was not going to let them lose. There were points where, like, they were throwing him the ball, and it felt like he was, like, triple teamed, quadruple teamed. Like, the Celtics were just like, let's send everyone at him, and they were. he was still getting shots off. He had a couple in the, in the second half. When they were really, especially that third quarter where they, you know, they win the third quarter again, they turn a deficit into a one-point lead, and then they kind of were able to just hold serve in the fourth. But that third quarter, he was hitting these threes with Derek White, like, right in his face. Like, the, the hand is in his face. And Derek White's a great defender. He's been great in this series, but it was just, it was one of those performances, and, and, it was, like I said, perfect timing because the rest of the Warriors, it was a bit of another mixed bag. Um, Draymond Green, two points. He did fare a bit better defensively. He had four steals, uh, eight rebounds, or eight assists, nine rebounds, I apologize, but only two points, one of seven. They kind of, like, were chanting and, like, the fans were yelling, like, shoot it when he had the ball, which is, like, arguably more disrespectful than, like, People not wanting you to shoot it because you're that good. Like, I, I would be demoralized if I was in a game like that and I heard someone like, oh yeah, shoot it. It's just, that's tough. That's a tough look for Draymond. Um, again, he did seem, you know, a little amped up early on. He had a couple early fouls. Um, and Steve Kerr actually made a huge decision in the uh, the fourth quarter and in the third quarter run where, you know, he he sat Draymond for, for parts of that stretch run. In favor of, you know, playing Kevon Looney, who did not start tonight. Otto Porter, who did start tonight, but only saw 15 minutes. And then Jordan Poole, who was able to provide some offensive spark, but still really inefficient. He had 14 points on, I believe, 13 shots. So it was it was a Steph or bust kind of game. Um, and then also Andrew Wiggins, who finally showed up and wanted to play like all-star starter Andrew Wiggins. He goes for 17 points, which are not big, but 16 huge rebounds. Like, career high in rebounds. It's a good time to have a career high when it's the NBA Finals. So he was an absolute monster on the boards. And to have his presence on so many putbacks and so many offensive boards and so many defensive boards where he was able to just box out and pull it down and help the Warriors get into that up-tempo type of spacing offense 
was huge. It was a huge part of the third quarter, and it was a huge part of them being able to hang on to the lead down the stretch. Uh, Clay Thompson, 18 points, but on 17 shots. So hopefully going back home um, to Golden State for Game 5 is going to help him kind of get more of that shooter's touch because they're going to need it because Boston's going to just keep looking for new ways to deny Steph the ball. And he's not always going to have these efficient games. I mean, he might. We might be witnessing a historic run, a genuinely, that wouldn't shock me at this point. Um, but for the Warriors, like, I really hope in this in this home, in this next home game, that they, like, explore the thought of playing Kaminga or Moses Moody a little bit. Draymond had 33 minutes tonight. It still felt like a tick too many with how, you know, how a defensive liability he's been. So, like, I would like to see, you know, maybe 28 minutes for Draymond and maybe, like, throw one of those guys out there, one of those rookies out there, and see if, you know, the youth, the energy, and the athleticism can just kind of help give a spark. Because when Steph is out there with the non-starters, it can get rough if those guys aren't hitting shots. So I, I appreciate Steve Kerr giving... Um, a difference in his rotations tonight. Steph played the entire first quarter, was back in about four minutes into the second, which is a lot different than what it is normally. And Steve Kerr so far had been really sticking to his his all his rotations that he's used all year. So I'm I'm appreciative of seeing that you know he finally switched it a bit. But I think giving one of those rookies is going to be a, a a huge thing that could be, you know, pretty low risk, but high reward if it pays off with with them being the matchup a little bit better um, defensively with all of Boston's wings. So speaking of Boston, I apologize for waiting this long to talk about them, but they honestly probably shouldn't feel terrible about losing this game. They've already won one in Golden State. Uh, they split, basically, they split the home games and that's fine. Because they're going back to Golden State with the knowledge that they can win and with the knowledge that Jalen and Jason both did not have good games. Jalen Brown, 9-19, but 21 points. Jason Tatum, 8-23, 23 points. And early on, it looked like Jason Tatum was like, going to have one of those games. He was like 4-6 early. He was hitting threes. It did not look good for the Warriors, but they were able to switch enough on Tatum and frustrate him enough force him into those tough turnarounds and those floaters, make him step into difficult shots, kind of disrupt his rhythm. And it was a huge, huge help. Wiggins, again, on the defensive end, came up very big as one of the primary defenders. Uh, They did keep Marcus Smart, or they did keep Draymond on Marcus Smart most of the time again as well when he was out there. So Wiggins definitely uh, played big tonight on both ends. Klay Thompson is, is still having flashes of that defensive prowess that has uh, has made him such a, a great two-way player. Um, so hopefully that continues to come along as well. But for Boston, really, I wouldn't feel terrible. Like, you lost a game by 10 points that really not that bad because it was close up until, like, the last minute. And Steph Curry scored as many points as your two stars basically combined. Steph had 43 and Jalen and Jason had 44. That's probably not going to happen every game. Now, it's a little daunting because you don't want to go in to Golden State and lose that game and then come back with that game six, that elimination game type pressure. But I really don't think both of those guys are going to continue to have those games that, that you know, where they're just inefficient. Neither of them are getting to the free throw line. That's another thing. Really thankful that it was a pretty even free throw game. It felt like both teams were arguing like every single call, which I mean, I think it's just part of basketball now. It's unfortunate, but I think it's just part of the game. Um, but it was, you know, it was, I believe 15 free throws for the Warriors to 19 for the for the Celtics. Um, and for the Celtics too, alongside Jalen and Jason, they're going to need to get a little bit more from those role players. Uh, Al Horford, um, not much tonight, eight points, six rebounds, four assists, but two of six shots. Now, you don't want, you know, Al Horford taking all of your team's shots or taking more than, like, your stars, but he's one of those guys that can really be a good outlet in those corners or in the post, or and it kind of felt like they, they started to go away from that a bit, and not, like, 
like the Jays were were pressing, but like just that they you know weren't they weren't moving the ball as well as they might have earlier in the finals. So I'll, I'm sure Horford will continue to you know be a focal point of the offense. I don't think this is going to be the norm. Uh, Derek White was also um, very inefficient. He had 16 points on 12 shots, uh, 4 of 12 shooting, 3 of 5 from 3, and it felt like every 3 was an absolute like momentum-swinging dagger, which he just kind of seems to be doing in this finals. Um, but overall, just not getting the type of production. And then Marcus Smart, 7 of 18, 18 points, only 5 assists, um, so in that lead guard spot, he's going to need to be, you know, taking on a more traditional point guard role. It's going to be up to him most likely to get those open shots for those other guys, especially those guys like Al Horford and Derek White. Like granted, Jalen Brown, um, to a lesser extent and Jason Tatum can drive in, kick out, can play make when need be and can find the open guy. But I think the way to go about it is going to be um, having, you know, those guys almost act as decoys in situations so that Marcus Smart can, you know, run a two-man game, pick and pop with, like, Al Horford or can find a cutting Derek White or something. Like, they're going to need to try to make the game easier and take advantage of any, you know, lapses or, or things they can find in the Warriors' defense. And defense is going to be, you know, the name of the game going forward. Because the Celtics have the best defense in the playoffs and in the league basically since January. There was a lot of talk that they were going to shut down Steph Curry. And he was not going to be able to do the Steph Curry things that he is currently doing in this series. So he had 43 points tonight. But not only that, it was the efficiency with which he did it. 14 of 26 for 43 points is absolutely wild when you consider that I believe he only took like... Eight free throws. Um, I mean, granted, it's still a lot, all things considered, but it's just, it's crazy to think that most of those were coming from the three-point line and from those floaters and interior layups and, and those little pull-ups. So Boston's going to really need to figure out what they're doing with him. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be like a, hey, let's let him get his and make the other guys beat us, or we need to shut him down and force the ball movement. Like, it's going to be really interesting to see because now Golden State has the momentum because they're heading back into Golden State. So not only does Boston have to solve how they're going to stop this, you know, this historic heat check type staff performance night in, night out, but they're going to also have to weather the storm of of just the the home court advantage. And with how contentious the series has gotten... I can only hope that, you know, Golden State is going to match the energy of those Boston fans. Probably not going to be, you know, a one-for-one one match because the makeup of the crowd basically is just different. I mean, that, that new Warriors arena is very uh, business suite heavy. I know the fans that can get in there are still going to be as loud and as vocal as ever. But it just is, it so far has been a different... Um, a tale of two different home court advantages, basically. But one thing tonight that blew me away is Steph Curry getting MVP chance in the garden. Like, I don't know if it was just that was that many Warriors fans there and they traveled that well, or if it was like Boston fans were like, hey, fair play to you, man. We're witnessing some, some greatness here. We hate Draymond, but we'll, we'll, hey, we'll give you respect. I have no idea. Um... And really, I think as this series goes on, it's going to just become a, a war of attrition. I mean, the Golden State Warriors run a nine-man rotation, Boston runs an eight-man rotation, and it's going to just it's going to just keep going. And it's going to be those those fringe players, those you know, Kevon Looney's, Jordan Pools, Andrew Wiggins, Clay Thompson, uh, Derek White, Al Horford, uh, Marcus Smart. He's not really a thing, but Grant Williams. I'll say Grant Williams instead of Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart, not a French player. Um, and we'll just, I mean, we'll see what happens. I, I really, I have no idea what to expect. I would imagine Steph probably going to keep cooking. Maybe not as efficiently as this. Uh, I think we're witnessing history in his run right now, and we need to respect that. But I think that this Celtics team is the type of team that is built to answer adversity on the road especially because they did it all throughout the playoffs. They did it against 
the Nets. Actually, they swept the Nets. There's no adverse, adversity there. They swept the Nets. They did it in Milwaukee, and they did it in Miami. So I have no reason to believe that going into Golden State could be any different other than maybe fatigue. So I say Steph keeps cooking. I say Boston finds a way to kind of make it a little bit more inefficient. And it's going to come down to, you know, which of those teams can take advantage of those open shots that these superstar performances are generating. Um, let me know, too, in the comments what you think about this series. If you think one team has a, a distinct advantage, if you think, you know, if you have any predictions for for Game 5, which will be Monday, or really the rest of the series going forward. Uh, I'm just really glad that they've been, you know, such good competitive games, especially the last two. It's been so much fun to watch. And the, the level of, of performance is has been just exceptional. As a fan, it's it's hard to not just be caught up in enjoying it and like not even concerned with who wins. Uh, I'm just as long as the games are good and you know it's not you know some free throw filled tacky foul call bonanza. I I'm just happy to be seeing such a high level of basketball on both sides. So let me know your thoughts, please. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the weekend, and I will be back.